Well, folks, up and look what I have done this time. Hey folks, it's Rusty the Reseller here. Guys, we got into a bunch of records. Out in the state sale, I put out some, um, oh, what do you call it? Some of those absentee bids. And I thought, well, you know what? Uh, I'd be willing to pay for these. There were several boxes, at least 100 vinyl albums in each one, various genres. Um, and I ended up winning 10 boxes, somewhere around 1,100 to 1,200 vinyl albums. I paid $60 per box, so I'm about $600 in on all of these. Uh, I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do with them. Definitely need to sort them. Definitely need to figure out uh, which ones might have higher values. But even if I, I mean, I got these at about 50 to 60 cents a piece. So if I just sell them for a dollar, I'd be doubling my money. Two or three dollars and up is just going to be gravy. I think I'm going to end up selling a lot of these locally just because of the time it would take to post a bunch of these online. And is it worth it my time to just do these at $10 a pop? Probably not. Um, but we're going to try to get some of these nicer ones. I'm going to look through, get some, maybe a handful to throw up first to kind of, you know, wet my whistle a little bit, stick my toe in the pool and just see if these are going to sell much. Uh, but let me show you a few that I just grabbed uh, initially while I was looking through. What's kind of cool here is uh, I found, this is what's weird folks, there were several of these. There's eight of them. It is, uh, you know, this little record, it's the Beatles, Baby It's You. Baby It's You, I'll Follow the Sun, Devil and Her Heart and Boys. I'm not really familiar with these tracks folks uh, all that much uh, these are from the early 60s right when they got started but if you come down here to the bottom you'll see oops this was actually produced in 1995 so these are uh kind of repressed redone pieces but i've got eight of them and these are selling for 10 or 11 dollars a piece online so that's good 10 bucks eight of them uh, that's $80 of my 600 back in these right here. Now, I know what you're going to say, folks. Hey, Rusty, don't lay these flat. Like, Well, folks, it's just, they're just laying here for a second, so calm down, all right? Calm down. I know how to handle uh, vintage records. Don't worry. But I got a uh, uh, King Nat King Cole, uh, a couple of these I know. We'll put those in a lot together. Oh, look at this looker. Oh my goodness, he's just, he's got his roses. He is just ready for a time, is he not? It's old Ringo Starr, uh, in my opinion, not the best looking beetle out there, but he he, he certainly knew how to how to uh, set a beat, I believe. And I didn't know, is he like a, what's going on here? Is he a police officer? Is he a sheriff? Certainly no shirt uh, covering his eyes. I don't know what he's, what he's got up his sleeve. Oh my, he's got weapons. Look out, folks. Never knew, never knew it, uh, Ringo. But that one will sell for probably fifteen to twenty dollars. Here's one, Peter Townsend of the Who, White City. Here's kind of a, a remixed one of Aretha Franklin. Got some uh, some Robert Palmer in here, like his old stuff, Moody Blues. A couple of those in a lot. You can see we're talking about sort of rock, J. Giles Band, Amy Grant. She's just. She is just belting it out with all her heart, isn't she? Bless her heart. Got a little uh, animal print uh, sweater going on situation. Um, oh, here we go. Millie Vanilli. Okay, you guys remember these cats? Getting up there and lip syncing uh, with all their heart. Duke Ellington. We got some uh, jazz up in here. We got some horns. Oh, and then look at this. Elvis. 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 Elvis the pelvis, they called him, folks. We got some some uh, religious-based ones, but I've got probably 15 or 20 Elvis albums here, and if they're really good ones, or I say really good ones, if they're ones that are, say, harder to come by, maybe uh, uh, pressings that are nice, uh, we're going to get those up. So I'm going to get these back. I just laid them flat so you can see them. I'm going to I'm gonna tip them up. Don't cry. Don't scream at me. This is not a, hey, it's a mustard seed uh, in that piece of jewelry, Rusty, situation. All right? Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Folks, if you watch one of the last videos, 
you'll know that I showed a piece of jewelry and I was comparing fine jewelry to costume jewelry. And I pretended like I didn't know what was going on with a piece of jewelry that had a mustard seed in it. And folks, I mean, it's like somebody, somebody uh, uh, decided that I had committed a crime against humanity. I have had more comments telling me uh, that, uh, you know, if you're a professional, Rusty, you would have known that that was a mustard seed. And folks, okay, listen, I'm not proud of it, but I'm going to I'm gonna be honest with you about something. Sometimes, sometimes old Rusty acts like he doesn't know something. And uh, he does it because it, it, uh, I've found that I get more engagement with people uh, that way. And listen, don't, don't, uh, don't hate the, the, the player. Hate the game. All right, uh, peop, uh, YouTube does not want to send out our videos to people unless it thinks that people are really enjoying our videos. And you know how how they know that they're enjoying our videos? People who get on and leave comments. And so the more comments I get, the more people YouTube wants to show our videos to. I, I didn't make the game, folks, but I certainly do play it. So uh, listen, I have a lot to learn from you folks. And, uh, and please get on and leave these comments and let me know when I've made a goof because I certainly do. But listen, folks, I know it was a mustard seed. I think you missed the point. The point was, folks, it was a piece of costume jewelry. It wasn't real. It wasn't uh, a fine jewelry. Unlike these pieces I'm going to show you right here. That was my little segue. Did you like that? segue into talking about fine jewelry here's a few pieces that we've come across recently this beautiful piece of 14 karat gold is uh, a little old vintage brooch with filigree here this is something that could easily just get tossed in a little a little 25 cent tray but it is 10 karat gold it's a little charm no it doesn't have a mustard seed in it but it does say i love you all right here is a ring that was in a bunch of costume jewelry that I bought in an estate sale last week. It has no stone in it, but it's etched. And you know what, folks? It's 18 karat white gold. So it does have value. Don't pitch these if you if you lose the stone. Gold has value. Here's a nice ring. It's uh, an unusual piece because it's actually 10 karat and 12 karat. That's right. This is what they call Black Hills Gold. It's a specific type of combination of 10 and 12 karat gold of different colors based on the different alloys that they're using in with the gold. And then, of course, this right here, which is quite nice, it's a 10 karat gold bracelet. These are all things we're going to throw up in one of our eBay stores this week. We're excited. If I find any mustard seed jewelry, I'll, I'll know. I'll know now, folks. I'll get it, and I'll make sure that I try to put it up for sale because clearly, clearly it's important to you guys. Quick update here, folks, on the Gibson LG2 that came in last week, folks. It's a she looks like a beauty, and she is. However, she needs extensive work. I took this to one of my guitar luthiers here in town, and this is what we discovered. The top is warped pretty heavily. It needs several braces on the inside need to be rebraced. Okay, when that happens, it's going to raise the top up, and once it raises the top up, the pitch of the strings is going to be off, which means it probably will then require what they call a neck reset. They'll steam this out, they'll loosen the glue, they'll pull the neck entirely off, and then with uh, different uh, devices to do measurements, they'll figure out the correct angle. If they have to shim it, they'll shim it. They'll glue it back in place at the correct angle. Once that's done, they're going to come in here because some of these frets... Uh, are just they 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 they're old and it's been used so much you can see this indentation on the fret here that is not good folks do you see that where it's been depressed so many times it's starting to dig into the metal there we're gonna have to get this refretted and then finally this nut up here this ugly looking nut is just made of plastic and it I want to replace it with something like um, bone or or an equivalent something like that that work. I was told it would be somewhere in the range of $1,400 to $1,800 to have repaired. And my guy locally is so busy, he said it might take a year. So I've been reaching out to some other people. But in the meantime, folks, this is what I did. So I contacted the seller on eBay and I let him know, hey, listen, you did not disclose all of this work. Holy cow, this is, this is three quarters of what I paid for this instrument or more that I'm going to have to pay to get this back and work in order. We went back and forth and I was surprised that this seller ended up agreeing to give me a $1,000 
refund, partial refund. So now I'm into this guitar for very, very little compared to what they uh, go for. And I am going to get the work done. So um, I'm waiting. I'm going to take that money. So with that money and a little bit more out of my pocket, I'm going to find someone else, hopefully locally. If not, I might even reach out to Gibson themselves. Uh, Mr. Gibson, and uh, and see if Mr. Gibson would uh, would just stop making guitars for a hot second and uh, and put this on his bench and uh, and take care of it for not too much more than I was quoted and in less time, hopefully. So wish me luck on that. And no sooner did the Gibson pop up at a good price that was uh, making me interested, this little goober also came on. I'm going to pull her down here so you can see. What we're looking at here, folks, is in the, somewhere in the teens. I've not exactly dated it yet, but you're looking at an A-style, a 19-teens uh, Gibson uh, mandolin. And uh, she's she's in pretty doggone good shape, folks. Let's just start at the top here. This is a, a time period when they weren't putting on this particular one. They didn't put their name at the top of the headstock. That's unfortunate because I like to see that old Gibson script up there. The nut is slightly shifted over a little bit. I don't know what's going on with that. It must have been like that for a long time. The biggest issue I have with this instrument, well, one of two issues. Number one, if you see up here, um, let me see if I can zoom in here. Um, it's not wanting to zoom in because I've got it over the, uh, there we go. Maybe this will do. Okay. So can you see this right here on the fret? Do you see this, this area here where there's some wood? It's almost like it's cracked or it's missing something right in there. Um, yeah, there's a good look for it. I think that this is just some de degradation of this rosewood here. Maybe there was a crack in it originally and it has just degraded. So what I'm probably going to have to do is get some wood putty uh, uh, that, that you use for wood repair work and maybe mix it. I'll either need to mix it with some sort of a dye to match that color or I'll uh, get it in there, you know, fill it in once. I'll take the strings off, obviously. I'll fill it in. Um, once it is uh, most is dried, I will sand it down so that it's uh, the correct, uh, you know, it's, it's flat like everything else. And then I'll come in afterwards and touch that up color wise. Um, but that's one issue. It's not the worst in the world that I've ever seen. It's not breaking off the edge. So we're fine there. I just need to, but I do need to repair that before I play it. The rest of the instruments are looking nice and clean. It's even got the original tortoise shell colored pick guard on here. In this particular type, sometimes the apparatus coming off of the pick guard itself is different depending on the age and what they use. But the way that this is held in place is actually quite, um smart um for the time so uh on, on underneath of here you can see there's a single uh i'll see if you can see it there you go it's a single uh, sometimes it's a, a tack like a like a um just like a finishing nail and sometimes it's a little screw so that's holding a section of that into the fretboard under there over here you've got a piece that's attached underneath of it and it just actually rests as you can see by tension it rests down on this so that if it's pushed, it doesn't go against the body. Now, this is not the best in the world, but sometimes they have a piece here that actually, and it may even be missing a piece. I'm not sure. Probably something that was like felt, something like this under here that was supposed to keep it from scratching the body. And, and actually, I will get something to put on here, uh, felt, some kind of a thing underneath it here so it does not continue to scratch. And then on this end, where it has the patent number, um... It says, uh, let's see here. Let's let's look at the actual patent. That's actually going to help me to date this eventually. Uh, patent, March 30th, uh, 09. Okay, so this is either a 1909. It's probably somewhere in the next two to three years, 10, 11, 12. They, they would make a bunch of these um, components, and then they would put them on. Sometimes it took them a few years to put on components that they had. But like I said, this is either uh, just before 1910, or it's in the early teens, as I suspected. 
But what I was going to say is you can see there's another piece uh, connected underneath of there that is there's a hole drilled and it comes in on this side on the uh, the bridge here, the floating bridge. So that's kind of cool. If we keep uh, coming down to the bottom, you can see the beautiful tail piece. That's where you can see Gibson with the script. Uh, and one thing, not a big deal, but this is common. Like this old plastic, folks, it, it degrades. It gets really fragile. And eventually, for some reason, this got snapped off as you can see the this is where um the little peg so you could connect um, a strap to hold it is basically broken off so i'm gonna have to take some pliers and very gingerly try to rotate that and pull it out if i'm not able to get it out i'll just have to take a drill and drill that out so that i can put a replacement in the back, uh, the sides are looking real nice. There are no cracks, no major issues with um, the headstock, the neck, or the body. It's it's in really good shape. A little bit of scuff in there from use. There is one area here at the lower bout, however, that you can see that there is some uh, some lifting and some de uh, it's starting to want to detach a little bit. The back uh, solid piece of wood uh, at the edge of the lower bout. And so, without doing a whole lot of extra work, I'm just going to get some glue, uh, some clear hide glue. I'm going to tape off around it so I don't get it on the body. I'm going to glue that in so that it, no, I don't need to put it back where it was originally, but I do need to stop it in its tracks and keep it from continuing to, to move out because I don't want that to continue up and down. Uh, but once I do that, we're really in good shape. The only other piece, and this is something I got to figure out what I'm going to do. The, uh, the old tuners, the, the, uh, four in a line here, are looking really good. Um, the uh, the handles are still in good shape. This is uh, something, it's not plastic and it's not bone and it's not ivory, although really, really old ones sometimes incorporated those. This is a type of substance that they call pyrolin. Pyrolin. It was sort of like an early plastic. It was a mixture of things, but you get these little striations in there. Um, old vanity sets that women used, uh, little handheld mirrors and tools and stuff to clean your nails out and to do do use you know whatever things when you were sitting there at your vanity dressing your your face up. Uh, oftentimes were made of this substance, but it's very interesting. Um, they look really good. They're open back tuners, as you can see. They're clean looking. The problem is, folks, they're so doggone tight. They're so tight. So I'm going to loosen these strings up and figure out. I don't know if there's some dirt or some residue in there, some rust that's causing problems, or if I simply need to loosen these uh, these little um, turning pieces here. I'm not sure. I need to look into that, but I'm really happy to get it. This is probably a 12 hundred to fifteen hundred dollar Gibson mandolin in the condition that it's in especially if I put it uh, correct some of these issues and I paid just around eight hundred dollars for it I'll probably sell it to make money eventually but folks I love instruments because I can play them and use them in the meantime and then when I get tired or I want to look for a new thing I sell it and I move on a couple of things that uh, ran into today while I was out. I paid approximately $2.50 for the two of these combined. This right here is a silver-plated, um, what they call a jigger, and there's a brand in there. I think it says Stif. Kirk Stif. EP1710. And it's, uh, you know, this is for uh, mixing drinks. That's where the uh, the little price tag was on it. I got to clean that off. But you can see right here it has been um, like monogrammed. It looks like maybe the letter P or F or I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> but I'm going to look these up and see. $2 for that. And then this was such an interesting find. I need to do some research. But this is a vintage shot glass. And it says Titanic like the ship of the Titanic, Island of Life? What in the world? Now listen, <clears throat> folks, this is not a brand new shot glass. Okay, it's not super, super old, because you see the way that it's made there. However, I don't think that they were uh, like just trying to be uh, funny. It's not a good joke, first of all. Island of Life, if, if anything, it's the opposite. You've got this gold leaf around, all around the edges, and you've got little anchors here. And then you have this portion, which is frosted glass on the outside of that. Do you see how that was made? It looks like it's never been drank out of before. 
I think that this was made as a uh, just like a little knickknacky thing uh, at like a, a store that you buy like little gift gift things. I don't know, folks. I've I've come across old ones like this from that era. Um, Pre-prohibition shot glasses. I feel like this was made later than that, but I just I'm racking my brain as to why they would uh, uh, you know try to make a joke unless this is legitimately old. Either way, folks, I paid fifty cents for it. Point five zero. I'm gonna do very well on this when I try to sell it. I just have to find the right buyer. These came in a lot of costume jewelry that I bought, mostly costume jewelry. There were a handful of other pieces um, in there. However, uh, I wanted to show you these, which were interesting. I come across maybe three to four of these articulating fishes uh, every year. Um, several costume brands made them. But you can see if you look very closely, it's a silver tone, but then you've got some of this almost like a yellowish color around some of the edges. And uh, the reason for that, folks, is that this is uh, made out of sterling silver. And that is some tarnishing that you're seeing. Very cool piece. This would have been made to hang as a charm on a bracelet or as a pendant on a necklace. And it even has a little stamp down here. As well, but it's very cute, very charming. Um, somebody will want that. And this is, folks, just a gorgeous little necklace. Look at this. Um, this was in with a bunch of costume jewelry. It is a gold filled uh, clasp. Now, this color of this clasp, however, uh, is different than the chain. The chain is much more gold colored. And so I have. Uh, I have a, a funny feeling that this clasp is a replacement. Anytime you find clasps, this is a good point, folks. If you find something that seems out of place, it's a silver color when it's a gold chain or, um, I don't know, just if it's copper, but the rest of it is silver looking like it's clearly been replaced. I think this has been replaced. I don't think this is the original one, but because... I'm not seeing corrosion on this chain link anywhere in any of the spots, and it's such a bright color still. I'm inclined to think that it may be a gold necklace. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to do some look. It's probably still gold filled, but it's in better shape than the clasp. Okay, what you're looking at here, folks, is a bunch of little, um, almost like, it's set up like charms or almost like miniature pendants. But you can see this right here. You can see the colors coming through. If you look at the back, it's open. That's a good sign. You move up to the next size up, and you're going to see that this thing has been made, strung with a wire, through these seed pearls, tiny little seed pearls, and you have a facet-cut gemstone in here. Now, the color to me, and based on other ones I looked at, uh, is very much saying garnet to me. Except, I don't know... Because it's got a little bit more of a pinkish hue than garnets usually have. They're usually like a, a much darker burgundy. And this is the darkest of the stones here. You can see that one's pretty dark. These smaller ones, however, are a little bit brighter than even that. Um, if you look at the light, you see that kind of that fire glinting out at you? It's just beautiful, folks. This is def seems like a bohemian type thing, and if garnet, if these are in fact garnets, then that certainly fits. Um, and then you've got these other little pieces right here, which are also hanging on that are etched in an interesting design. Let's see if you can zoom in for me here on this, um, but they're very cool. Um, there we go. Do you see that etched? So much attention to detail on this. I need to do a test for both gold and also to determine what this actual gemstone is. But it's a beautiful little uh, necklace. It's certainly not costume, uh, at least not in the same way that like these plastic bangles and stuff that are in here are like. But then what takes the cake, folks, is this. <clears throat> now, if you look at this to the untrained eye, this looks just like a sort of a basic little pin, little brooch. Now, <clears throat> those of you who have worked with or held lots of vintage or antique jewelry will probably would probably have the same suspicion that I had, which is it's unusual looking. You flip it over and you see a bunch of stones that are facet cut 
that are made for light to come through, and they aren't glued into place. They're actually held into place, okay? The piece is made to hold those. And then you have a single pin in the back, some bins, and this little C hook here, which is very oftentimes indicative of an older, much older piece. It's also made as a part of this, uh, the overall design of this piece here. If I can readjust uh, my camera here. And so it's, it's fascinating. Kind of a little tarnish, but definitely more of a kind of darker gold color. Well, I tested with um, uh, my, my gemstone tester, my diamond tester, and these are not diamonds, unfortunately. Oh my goodness, old mine cut diamonds, seven of them. That would have been incredible. But I'm happy to report, though, that this brooch itself is testing in at 18 karat solid gold. So this is probably, I mean, this would be considered Georgian style jewelry, which is from the 1700s up until about 1830s. So is this an early 1800s piece? I don't know, but it's possible. But I need to find out what these stones are. They're pretty heavily included when you look at it with a loop. Um, goodness now, come on, light. Uh, but it's definitely a very cool piece. Some pretty large stones there, probably a carat at least in the center. And then you're looking at 0 0.5, 0 0.6 carat on each of them around the edge. I don't know if these are very clear sapphires, if these are uh, very, very, very pale aquamarines. I'm not exactly sure, but I'll let you know. Uh, pieces like this, if they had diamonds in it, would be several thousand dollars, even at its size in gold. I don't know what these stones are, but stay tuned. Hopefully we can give you an update soon. I wanted to show you one more thing I got out at this... Um, a couple of things actually this and one more and i'll show you that in a moment uh out of this estate sale absentee bids um what you're looking at here folks in case you're not aware is a bunch of uh antique cutlery and this is definitely at least 100 years old probably older than that and there's a couple features here that um, will help you identify things like this um and determine value so there are um a few things first of all let's just look at this old fork here shall we on the back of this fork right here, we've got some information. It says LF, uh, SC or JC, something like that, England. Okay, so we've got a manufacturer's and maker's mark on that. This part here, the fork, the portion that you'd put in your mouth is steel. Okay, but if we find our way down here to this piece of metal, which by all accounts and purposes looks like the same piece of metal, although still tarnished and a little bit darker, oh, actually it's different. Down here you've got initials. Somebody had this initial with their initials, or perhaps this was made for a particular place that you ate, and then they put initials. But I think that this is actually a person's initial. Sometimes you have them, hotels would put their insignia, things like that. But right down here at the bottom, folks, I'm going to try to lay this down here and keep, keep uh, I'm going to try to zoom in for us here. So here we are. We're looking at this piece of metal, okay? Right here, uh, here's the letters as we talked about. But if I flip this puppy over on the back, you're gonna see right here, zoom in for me, it says Sterling. Sterling, so this is steel up in here, steel. This portion from here to here is a sterling silver band. So we got a semi-precious like a metal here and that's cool. And then down here, this portion, is actually a natural substance. That's right. This uh, is known as mother of pearl, or sometimes people will call it abalone. But it's a solid piece. In fact, all of these are. Do you see that glint here, folks? This is carved from shell from the ocean. Big old piece. See how that's curved? It's curved like that because that's the way it was naturally, uh, it was naturally formed that way. And if you look real close, you can see how worn and rubbed it is from the use, that sort of thing. Cool, here it is too, this and that, and then look at this. This is entirely made from 
that substance. There's no metal on it at all. This would be considered like a a cocktail fork or something that you would just, you know, a little thing. You just poke it and you just eat that stuff. All right. Uh, and then you clean this up and you do it again. But this is before dishwashers and stuff. Here's another one. We've got this kind of cool motif here. But in, instead of the bottom, look right up here by my thumbnail. Right there. It's hard to see if you're not looking for it. And you don't know where to look. Sterling. Look at that. So tiny. So tiny. It's there, folks. These are out there. You can find these in uh, bins at thrift stores sometimes with other cutlery. Stuff like this. It's clearly old. This one's obvious. Look at this. It says Sterling. Big and bold right here. Sterling. Okay, um, this stuff, I won this and a few other pieces that I'm not showing here, but all cutlery. I won them for $20 in, um, you know, a lot. And so, like, this piece alone will sell for probably 10 or 15 bucks. I'm, I'm sure of it. And then I'll probably get 30 or $40 for this little semi, you know, uh, this set. These knives go together i might sell those together but this this and this are from different sets but they have the same they're roughly the same time period very very cool stuff i was happy to find it and hopefully now you know where to look sometimes the blade could actually be made of silver as well um, or it would have some sort of writing on the blade look on the blade itself because sometimes you'll find something like, is that going to pop up there? Yeah. You can just barely see the edge of where it says universal. And let's see. Here we go. Yeah, this one's much more clear. Universal. And it has some letters below it. Cool. Another thing I got uh, at this, so I got all the vinyl records, I got that uh, flatware I just showed you, and then I got these. Approximately 122, what they call Liberty Nickels, or Barber Nickels. And you can see this one's from 1903. On the back, it has a V. And uh, I got a bunch of these. They're all various dates various ages and condition you can see this one um it would be okay except look at all that heavy intense pitting and i don't know what causes that pitting it's like it's been banging around inside a washing machine or something from 1900 you can see the v what i've done is i've taken uh, i've gone through a sorted them all looked at all the dates i don't have any dates that are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars unfortunately but you know i wouldn't be that lucky uh, I, I sorted out, I took those, and I took these out. Now, these happen to be in better condition, generally speaking. Front and back, they're clearer. Um, there's definitely some tarnish and things like that for collecting purposes. I'm not going to clean these. But I pulled these out because these I will either sell in a small lot of all these together, or I will pull them out and sell them individually. Okay, individually. I paid $24 for all of these. I'm going to throw this one up. For around a hundred to hundred and ten dollars for this eighty or ninety sum, I expect to get an offer for around do, you know dollar for number. So I've got eighty eight in here. I expect to sell this for between eighty and ninety dollars, well into profit at that point. Then I'm going to throw these up. Not all vintage coins bring good values. However, oh, there are lots and lots of ones that do. So do your research first. I knew that even in bad condition, if I could get these for my asking price, I could make money on it. And then there's always, of course, that uh, potential uh, that I could strike it rich on a particular date or something really nice. So anyhow, coins are cool. And I was happy to get these. Keep a lookout. Oh, Hi. You're still here? Thanks. Thanks for coming in today, folks. And don't forget our other channels, Postcard Planet, What's Sold, What's Sold Podcast, and more. Please, if you still want to stick around on the platform for a bit longer, come check those channels out, too. We sure appreciate it. We'll see you real soon. Good luck treasure hunting. Rusty, how, how, how do what I'm talking about. Rusty, rusty, rusty hair.